Hello, welcome to this tutorial on Miro, one of the virtual whiteboard tools that we use at Agile Velocity. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen and I'll see what it looks like. Either prior to or at the beginning of your workshop, facilitator will give you a Miro link using any web browser you like. You can enter uh, copy paste and you'll be taken to the Miro board. Up at the top, you'll notice you've arrived as a guest. They offer you to log in or sign up. You don't need to do either of those, log in or sign up. Uh, you'll be using it uh, in guest mode. Unfortunately, we can't dismiss this uh, blue banner, so it sort of is annoying. Uh, I'm using the key to zoom in and out, and I'll show you more of that in a moment. The facilitator has the ability to summon everybody to where they are, and they, they will announce that, and they'll bring you to an area to look at. Uh, typically, when, we'll, when we start something, we'll do a deep dive into some of the Zoom tools. We're not going to do that today. The focus is going to be on Miro as a tool. Just as in the real classroom and the virtual classroom, we rely heavily on sticky notes to collaborate. There's a couple of ways to add a sticky note to a board. One of the easiest is to hit the N key, mnemonic for note. Another one is to use the toolbar on the left here. So if you use N, what comes up is a color palette, and you can click, and it takes the default. Another way is to click and drag. Your cursor's in the note to begin with, so you just start typing away. You can adjust the size by grabbing any of the open circle corners of your note, and it scales. Text automatically adjusts. These closed dots are for connectors. So if you're building a flow chart or you want to connect two ideas, you can click on those dots and draw connectors. When you see the edge, uh, you can drag and change the aspect ratio. For you overachievers, you'll notice this pop-up contextual formatting bar where you can do all kinds of things. You can change the size from some built-in small, medium, and large stickies. Again, you can override those by using the open circle corner. You can change colors if you're doing color coding. You can change text alignment from left, center, right, top, middle, bottom. And you can toggle between two fonts. You can also change text sizes from automatic to manual. And then there's a bunch of other shapes, and we'll go into them uh, at another time. As you're using Miro with multiple users, if you find the cursors flying around the screen kind of distracting, uh, there's a way to show and hide them. So let me bring you all as a facilitator to this section. What you'll see up here at the top are all the participants indicated by small circles. And then to the left, uh, this arrow cursor. So it toggles from show to hide. So here we have Gina also participating. She's up here in this area. Uh, if we don't want to see all those flying around, you can simply turn them off. When we collaborate with a number of people in the classroom, often to make more intimate discussions, we'll use Zoom breakout rooms. When you're asked uh, to join a breakout room. In Zoom, you'll get a pop-up. That pop-up is going to correspond to the room you're going to be in. When you have a workspace that corresponds with that room, you'll need to find it. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Down here in the lower left of the screen is a flyout menu, which gives you lots of other options, and it toggles between show and hide. So when you need to access uh, different areas on the canvas, we'll say, go ahead and open the frames panel. That's the leftmost item here. 
There's two views in frames. One is a thumbnail view, which in Miro is called bar. It's very similar to slide thumbnail preview in PowerPoint or Keynote. It's a little easier, we find, to use text view, and then you'll be able to navigate through the different areas. In a breakout room session, uh, for example, if you've been to been assigned to room three, we'll ask you to go there. And this is how you find it. Frames, panel, and click the room. You'll know you're in the right place because the room's name will be shown prominently. If you find yourself in room two um, and you need to be in room three, again, through the frames, you can click it. If you really get lost, let me show you uh, a quick way to move around. Miro has a number of built-in navigational keyboard shortcuts. If you're used to these in your browser window, many of these will be familiar. You can zoom out, you can zoom in by using these keyboard shortcuts. Once you move your cursor uh, or your view, you're disconnected from what the facilitator has been showing you, but you can certainly follow them again by simply clicking on their icon. The space drag on both Windows and Mac allows you to move around the canvas. So if you've zoomed out because you've sort of forgotten where you are and you've zoomed in and you want to come back here, um, you can zoom into that quite easily. In breakout rooms and also in the common room, uh, one of the things we do a lot of will be card matching and sorting exercises. To do that, you need to be using the select tool, which is the top tool. That toggles between move and select. So when you see the arrow cursor, you're in select mode. If you happen to see the hand, you're in move mode and you can't select any object. You can simply toggle or use the keyboard shortcut B. I'm not sure what the mnemonic there is, but once you've got it selected, you can match things up. We try to take a break every 50 to 60 minutes when we're doing virtual collaboration. Avoid fatigue. The facilitator will summon you over to the break, right? They'll bring you here. They'll also put up a timer. In this case, I'm gonna do a very short one, five seconds so you can see what it looks like. But typically we'll do a 10 minute break. So when the timer starts, what you'll see on your screen is how much time is left along with the bar at the bottom. You also hear a pleasant chime. So if you're away from your screen and you come back and you see the bouncing icon of the timer, time has been up. Go ahead and close that. Another feature that we use a lot is a voting. So let me jump over for a second to the, the uh, facilitator screen and I'm going to start a voting session. Give me a second to get it started and we'll give every participant three votes and you'll see what it looks like momentito once I get it started. Once the session has started, you'll see this up here on the top right. And to start casting your votes, you click the blue vote now, and you'll see the items that you can vote on indicated by this plus indicator. So I've cast my vote on these three items. And over here in the voting panel, I can see what I've cast my vote on. And if I change my mind, I can remove a vote from item five and cast it on number 12. If I try to do more than I've got, I'll see I'm out of votes. And if I indicate I'm done when I still have one vote left, you'll get a prompt. You still have one more vote. Would you like to use it? You can cast multiple votes on a single item if you like. And you can also, once again, remove items. When you've used all your votes and you're done, go ahead and click done. 
when everybody else has voted, the facilitator will end the session and then display the results. Let me go ahead and cast some votes as a facilitator on a separate screen I've got going and then end the session. When voting is complete, you'll see that. And then Miro will process all participants' votes. We'll see them pop up. And over here is the tally. You can dismiss that. If you want to see it again, bottom panel has access to the voting sessions. If you can't see that panel, click it, it opens. The thumbs up is the voting session and you'll be able to see previous votes. There's another method that we use frequently. It's called dot voting. We may ask you to say, you know, come down to section 12, in which case there'll be instructions, there'll be a brief overview, and a reservoir of dots. To dot vote, you simply drag a vote onto a scale. Let me jump over to my facilitator screen, and I'll show you what it looks like when someone else is voting. You'll see uh, an indicator of their name if they're not anonymous. Um, if they are anonymous, uh, you'll just simply see an indicator of who they are, guest artisan, or okay, Gina was editing, you'd see that. What this gives us is a visual map where we can then discuss how people are viewing uh, their context. And again, let me just go over here and drag a few other dots, see what it looks like. If you Choose a single color, makes it a little easier to adjust if you remember who you are. Sometimes we'll ask people to put labels. Sometimes we'll keep it fully anonymous. Icons are a nice visual way of communicating information. To access Miro's icon menu, come down here in the toolbar to dot, dot, dot. Click it, you'll see the icon finder here. And up comes a long list of common icons. But the most powerful thing is to use the keyword search. If you're feeling your superpowers, making coffee for the team, type coffee, hit return, drag that down. If you want to scale it, again, you've got the open circles in the corners. To add another icon, come back here. And if by bringing coffee helps collaboration, let's see, you can bring those to scale and connect. Finally, one other way that we use to indicate voting is to drop a sticky note along a scale. In this case, um, we're asking you, give us some feedback on this session. If you got lots of value, drag it over here. If you got little value, you drag it right here. In any event, let us know what we can do to improve. More frequent breaks could be one maybe some virtual chocolate. Or if you just absolutely loved it, you can tell us it was great. So that's it. That is Miro in a nutshell. Happy exploring.